Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. This is Mike and Fans in your state lobbyist for Abate of Arizona. Uh, I'm going to go through a, a little series to start uh, with this one right here. Uh, this is called Adapting Alinsky's Rules for Radicals. Now, Saul Alinsky was a, an organizer in uh, in the 60s based out of Chicago, and his book, Rules for Radicals, was first published in 1971. Uh, it's been amazing on the impact that this book has had on so many uh, community organizers. Uh, he founded what is known today as the Alinsky ideology and the Alinsky concepts of mass organization for power. His work in organizing the poor to fight for their rights as citizens has been internationally recognized. We're going to go through, uh, he died in 1972, and we're going to go through uh, some of his rules, and we're going to start with rule number one here today. Alinsky's rule number one, power is not only what you have, but what the enemy thinks you have. If you see the picture here on the screen, there's about 30 or so motorcycles there. Uh, it's amazing what kind of impact 30, 40, 50 motorcycles can have when everybody in the offices at the state capitol can hear you roll up. Uh, we may be 150 or 200 strong, but when we roll that deep, we can make a, a large impact. One of the things that uh, um, we actually did, there were five or six of us that, that went to a town hall meeting in Tucson. And you know, just the five or six of us in, in a room of 50 makes a big impact. So power is not only what you have, but what the enemy thinks you have. If you ever visit the town of Salzburg in Austria, you'll immediately notice the brightly painted statues of bulls and cows scattered throughout the city. Some are tie-dyed, some are painted plaid, and some even have costumes on. The bulls may seem like a strange art project or a quirky local cu custom, but if you ask any local, they'll tell you a story of the Salzburg bull washers. Legend goes that during an uprising in the 16th century, peasants laid siege to the fortress high on the hill in the center of town. As the weeks dragged on, the peasants were sure they would win. They had cut off the nobles' food supply, and surely the fortress's resources were going to go run out quickly. But every morning, the peasants would spot a different bull grazing on the walls of the fortress. It seemed no matter how long they laid siege to the fortress, the nobles never ran out of fresh meat. Frustrated, the peasants eventually gave up and went home. It was only later that the truth came out. It was, it was only one bull. You see, every day the nobles would send the bull out to graze, and every night the bull washers would scrub off the bull's spots and repaint it. The next day they would set the bull out someplace else along the walls of the fortress. Some days the bulls would be black, some days the bull would be spotted, some days the bull would be brown, but it was always the same bull. You know, whether that legend is true or not, um, there's, there's an important lesson in it for grassroots organizers and grassroots activists. activists. What won the day for the nobles wasn't just what they had, that one bull, but also what the peasants believed the nobles had. The, this idea was so important to Saul Alinsky that he made it the first rule of his, uh, of his book, Rules for Radicals. There have been other progressive activists that have followed his lead. Jesse Jackson famously said in politics, an organized minority is a political majority. And you can see this tactic used almost every day when a small group of Twitter accounts organizes a boycott of a business. That's Alinsky's first rules in action. When a handful of activists make it seem like a speaker isn't welcome on a college campus, that's Alinsky's first rule too. What most freedom-loving activists don't know is that we can use Alinsky's tactics as long as we use them in a principled way. In most cases, just organizing a small group and showing up can make a difference, especially on the local level. 
town councils, county supervisor boards, uh, legislative committees rarely have people show up for comment. A small group of activists visiting a legislator's office, hosting an event, or showing up at a town hall with coordinated signs and messaging is often enough to attract the interest of lawmakers and of the media. If you can show that you're organized and vocal, you'll have the attention of local legislators. After all, if this small group of motorcyclists was willing to show up, how many more might feel the same way. Author and academic Margaret Mead once said, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. Think about that one. If motorcycle rights activists like us are willing to work together we can wield more power than we thought ever would be possible. We can change the world. If you'd like more information on how to get involved, go to www.abateofaz.org and click on the communications. You can give us a call. The number's on the screen there or just drop me an email directly. You can click on the legislative link and it'll it'll bring you to my email address. Be more than happy to talk to you more about this. Be involved. Be a radical.